Happy Sabbath again, Church. Happy Sabbath. It's a pleasure to be here today. And I praise God because, as Elder Andrew said, I haven't been here since before the lockdown, which is a long time. And I was coming quite regularly, wasn't I, Elder? You have to admit that. Oh. <laughs> I had even got used to climbing that hill, you know, the hill with the cobbled streets and coming up the steps. <laughs> The first time I did that, I got here and Brother Max was here and he said, morning, happy Sabbath, and I couldn't speak. <laughs> and anyway, because I was coming there regularly, I got so used to it and I was coming up and I was really pleased with myself, praising God. And so I was dreading that hill today. But you know, it is, it is. But today I came up here with my grandson and, you know, I got to the top and I thought, I'm not doing the stairs. I need some practice on that one. <laughs> so we walked around. But, you know, I got here and I could actually breathe. So I praise God. <laughs> we have to praise God for everything. I praise him for that. Amen. Amen. I praise him that I'm able to stand here this morning because we know that some people may not have made it through the night. So I praise him for that as well. It's a blessing to be able able to speak to even stand some people can't do that so we praise him for all things and to be here today so the title of our message is grace for impact grace for impact and let's just pray before we start if you can use anything lord you can use me touch my hands lord and my feet touch my heart lord and speak through me if you can use anything lord you can use me Amen. Amen. So grace for impact. Grace is an instruction to prepare yourself for something difficult or unpleasant. And you may not know when that something is coming or how it will present itself. But one thing is for sure, you know that it's coming. And you would normally hear this instruction on a plane, wouldn't you? Whenever you hear grace, you think of a plane. Um, because that plane may be going to make an emergency landing. It's not something that you want to hear when you're on a plane, is it? Yeah. I was on my way to the Caribbean on a British Airways flight. When I got on the plane, as everyone is, you know, going through all the security and you're in this holiday mode, you know, and I just disguise my nose by just talking, talking, talking. So I don't like flying, but is there anyone else here that doesn't like flying? Okay, most, most of you do, okay. I pray the most when I'm in the air. And soon the doors of the plane were closed and we were taxiing down the runway and the cabin crew started their demonstration of the emergency procedure, but I wasn't paying any attention at all. We flew down the runway and we started the ascent and up, up and away. And I'm actually not sure which part of the flight that I dislike the most, whether it's the ascent or while we're actually cruising in the air or actually the descent but we finally got to the required height and the seatbelt sign went off. And people start feeling a bit more comfortable then, you know, you hear the clunk, clunk, click and everything's coming off and then people start walking around and chatting and, but I'm really uneasy. So I stay in my seat the whole time with my seatbelt on, sleeping. So as we were gliding along, everyone doing their own thing, suddenly we heard a loud bang and the plane began to shudder. And this was worse than going through some rough clouds or um, turbulence. Turbulence can be really serious sometimes. The seatbelt sign came back on and the cabin crew started rushing around telling everyone, get back to your seats, put your seatbelt on. People start to make all these promises to God, don't they? Whenever things start going wrong, we start thinking back in that moment, what you could do for him if you're allowed to get through that situation. And after what seemed like ages, the captain came on the PA and advised that we had lost an engine and we had to make an emergency landing. What? People started to cry. Some were shouting. Some like me were praying for God to have mercy on us, to take full control of the plane and all the things that I would do if only Lord you spare my life. And at times like this, you see your life flashing before you. All the things that you did wrong, you start asking God to forgive you. All the things that you knew you should have done that you didn't do, you ask God to forgive you. Some of us were scrambling around looking for that emergency procedure leaflet to have a quick read of what to do. 
but the lights went off. It was too late to do that now. Lord, I really should have been listening to the cabin crew when they did their demonstration. You realize that there is nothing that you can do to prevent this situation from happening. It's a helpless situation in our eyes. Looking around, everything seemed to be in slow motion. Is this really happening? Our course was altered and we were to land at the nearest airport. There was silence on the plane, saints. Nobody spoke. The atmosphere was so tense and this fear just came over everyone. And we finally heard those dreaded words, brace. We all sat right back in our seats, dropped our heads in our laps, placed our hands over our heads, waiting and anticipating and praying hard. The pilot landed that plane and we all clapped. And I praise God and I'm sure others did for his mercy. The relief that came over everybody was huge. And we made it, as you can tell, because I'm standing here to tell the tale. But we had to get into position and we had to wait expectantly for that difficult thing that was coming, that emergency landing. We were all able to brace for the crash. We were able to prepare ourselves for what was coming. And you know, saints, as Christians, we have time to brace for impact. We have time to prepare for what is coming, no matter the scenario or the outcome. As we look back on 2020 and 2021 to date, it's been a real time, a real year and a half of it. Coronavirus took over the whole year, causing confusion and panic and uncertainty and fear. And the time has simply flown by. Children missed out on school and were being schooled at home. Children missed their exams and had to have teacher assessments instead. And all those people were working from home and some are still working from home. Furlough and social distancing, COVID-19, support bubbles, R ratings pinging, you are on mute all became new words in our vocabulary. Hands, face, space, hand sanitizer, face masks, one-way systems, long queues for everything, empty shelves, all become the order of the day. Life as we know it has dramatically changed. Families being kept apart and no face-to-face, -face, no hugs, no kissing, no touching, no eating in church, no church gatherings. And you know, now it's got to the stage where we actually ask, are you hugging? Are you shaking hands? Can I give you a hug? <laughs> We're just starting to get back to new normal now. There are still elderly in their homes who are alone. Those in hospital alone, no visitors allowed. I went to visit a member recently and all I could do was wave to him through a glass door because he couldn't come out. He wasn't allowed to come out to speak to me in the corridor and I wasn't allowed to go into the ward. So I couldn't go in to see him. All we could do was just smile and wave through a glass door and then I just rang him on his mobile and was speaking to him while I'm looking at him through the glass door, new normal. Our NHS staff and carers are exhausted as they work alongside those many, many patients. We, we have members in our church who work for the NS, NHS and we applaud you and we praise God for each one of you. It's been predicted that the economy will contract by 11.3%, the largest fall in 300 years predicted that 2.6 million people are expected to be unemployed by the end of this year, and we're in September. So saints, as Christians, this is not a time for questioning. This is a time for believing. Jesus was in the temple in Jerusalem and when some very important people demanded that he tell them whether he was truly the Messiah. And his response was interesting. Let's turn to John 10, 25. John chapter 10, verse 25. If somebody could read that when they found it, that would be great. 
John chapter 10, verse 25. So Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear a witness of me. The words that, works that I do in my Father's name bear witness of me. He had turned water into wine. He had brought the dead back to life. He had cast out demons and caused the blind to see, the lame to walk, calmed the stormy seas. And yet they still asked him whether he was the Messiah. I told you, but you do not believe, he said. Jesus has told us too, through every beat of our hearts, every shower of rain, every flower, every sunset, every sunrise, I told you, but you do not believe. This is a time, not a time for questioning saints, but it's a time for believing. The works he does in his father's name bear witness of him. Let's turn to 1 John 4 and verse 4. Somebody could read that when they found it, please. That would be great. First John chapter four, verse four. Anyone found that? Friends, do not believe every spirit, but Test the spirit to see whether they are from God. Amen. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Amen. You bear children who are from God and have been, and have overcome them because of the one who is in who is in you that is greater than the one that is in the world. Amen. Amen. So be encouraged. He who is in you is greater than anything the enemy may throw at you or use to get to you. And that is a promise from God. But do we believe or are we still doubting? When we see our loved ones who are ill, when we see our loved ones who are weak and in pain and can't breathe with this virus or other illnesses, do we believe? When we see our loved ones out of work, struggling to pay the mortgage, to pay their rent, struggling to pay or to, to buy food to feed their children. Do we believe or do we doubt? We're seeing our church members walking away from the church because they've lost hope. People not wanting to come to the physical church, but preferring to stay at home, to watch the service on YouTube or Zoom with their mics muted and their cameras off. It's a real issue, not just here in our district, but also conference-wide, worldwide. And we have to encourage each other and, and look out for our vulnerable and lonely members. Members are doubting God's power as they see all the difficult situations, illness and death happening around them. But let us remember, saints, that he is still the God that turned water into wine. He is still the God who brought the dead back to life. He is still the God who cast out demons. He is still the God who caused the blind to see. He is still the God who caused the lame to walk. And he is still the God who calmed the stormy seas. And he is still the God whose voice the winds and the seas obey. Amen. He's still the God of the mountains. Yet we are still asking whether he is in control. Jesus is still saying to us today, I told you, but you do not believe. You know, fear of the unknown can be really crippling. And King Jehoshaphat, one of Judah's good kings, knew that too. And the joint forces of Ammon and Moab and Edom were gathering their armies on the eastern side of the Dead Sea, ready to attack. And scripture tells us in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 3, and I'll read that in your hearing, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 3. When Jehoshaphat heard this, he was afraid and asked the Lord to help him. He also announced a day of fasting and prayer. 
the Bible says Jehoshaphat feared. Instead of trying to take matters into his own hands or give up, we read that his response to this fear, he turned his attention to God and he prayed an emotionally raw prayer, claiming God's past promises of leading his people to safety. And let's look at that prayer in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 5 to 12. Many of them came to Jerusalem and assembled in the courtyard of the temple to pray. Jehoshaphat stood up and prayed, O Lord God of our fathers, you're the God of heaven and earth. You rule over all nations and kingdoms. All power is yours, and there is no one who can stand up against you. You are our God. You are the one who drove out the inhabitants of this land and brought your people Israel here, just as you promised our father Abraham, your special friend. Your people have lived here and built a temple for worshipping you. You said that if troubles came, whether through famine, war, sickness, or any other calamity, and we came to the temple looking to you for help in our distress, that you would hear our prayers and save us. The combined armies of Edom, Ammon, and Moab, whose land you would not allow our ancestors to attack when they came out of Egypt, are now coming against us. This is how they're repaying us for not destroying them. They're coming here to drive us out of the land you gave us. Oh Lord, our God, please help us. We're helpless against such a vast army. We don't know what to do. So we're looking to you to save us. Neither do we know what to do but our eyes are upon you. And that should be our daily cry, church. We don't know what to do about the coronavirus. It's a pandemic that is ravaging the world, our country, our families, and our friends. People are dying all around us. And, and we're questioning, it. is it a conspiracy? Is it not? We're confused. Shall I take the vaccine? Shall I not? We don't know what to do about the fires. We don't know what to do about the floods, the famines in all kinds of places in this very country. Look at what's happening in Greece and Turkey, California, water and fire everywhere. Lord, please have mercy on us. There's confusion, there's chaos, there's doubt, there's uncertainty and fear. There's crisis of leadership in our government, in, in, in different governments around the world, we look at Afghanistan, we don't know what to do, Lord, but we still trust in you and our eyes are fixed firmly upon you, amen? King Jehoshaphat didn't pray in vain, church. God heard his anguished cry and he spoke through an ordinary Levite named Jehaziel. And through Jehaziel, God gave a promise to King Jehoshaphat and his people in verse 15 that would silence their fears and it reads and said all of you whether you're from jerusalem or from elsewhere in judah listen to the word from the lord don't be afraid of this armed large army the battle belongs to the lord and not to you amen, amen. the same applies to us God told his people, do not be afraid, before declaring that the battle itself, which they feared most, was not actually theirs. Notice God didn't say that we wouldn't have to face the enemy. We will have to face the enemy. And King Jehoshaphat still had to meet the combined armies. But crucially, Israel would not have to fight the battle. God lovingly took away the most harrowing part of that experience, the battle itself, and he carried it squarely on his own shoulders. What a mighty God we serve. And the same applies to us today, saints. We were in a lockdown. There's talk of a potential lockdown in November time again. Shopping centers were deserted. Our streets were deserted. Our churches were deserted and locked up for that matter. People were staying in their homes, but let's remember that the sunrise is not locked down. 
Fresh air is not locked down. Family time is not locked down. That was an opportunity for us to resurrect the altar within our homes. Friendship is not locked down. Creativity is not locked down. Prayers were not locked down. Hobbies are not locked down. And hopes and dreams are not locked down. Kindness is not locked down. Learning is not locked down. Conversation is not locked down. We were still able to call each other on our phones. Imagination is not locked down. The sunsets were not locked down. Hope, importantly, hope was not locked down. So cherish what we have, church. This promise is echoed loudly throughout scripture. And there's perhaps no more powerful articulation of this promise than when it was spoken to the Israelites who were fleeing the suffocating su suppression of Egyptian tyranny. And the early moments when they were released into freedom was brief because their hearts started beating fast because they could hear the sound of those unchained chariots of Egypt's fiercest warriors pursuing them. Their fear was made even worse when they realized that their path was blocked by the Red Sea. They felt trapped. Do you sometimes feel trapped, church? Trapped in the house? Trapped because you can't visit your loved ones? Trapped because you can't go to the shops? Trapped in a mask that you can't even breathe in? Trapped by all the restrictions that are in place? Trapped by loneliness? Trapped in relationships that may not be going right? Moses, however, was unshaken, and that's how we should be, unshaken. You know, with a rallying cry, Moses rose up, and in Exodus 14, 14, he boldly told the Israelites not to be afraid, for the Lord will fight for you. God's promise given through Moses to the Israelites during the Exodus is no different from the promise that God gave to King Jehoshaphat. And that promise is no different to the promise that he gives us today. Amen. It's equally relevant to us today. God will bear the burden of our battles. And it's a promise that we can confidently claim in our lives as we face this pandemic, which is ravaging the world. It's ravaging this country. It's ravaging the Southeast. It's ravaging Ashford, Canterbury, Folkestone, Margate. There's something deeply personal <coughs> in the way that Moses articulated the promise. Read the words again. The Lord will fight for you. He doesn't say he might. And nor does he say, I will do this if you do that. The statement shows a choice. Our Heavenly Father chooses to fight for us. And this gives us a powerful glimpse of his character and his undeniable love for us. God goes to any length to fight for us, his children. Amen? Amen. The cross is the best evidence. Just Let's just think about that for a while. The Lord will fight for you. The cross is the best evidence of this. There are no more profound words of assurance in our walk with God than to know that he is willing to fight any battle necessary to bring us back to his heart. Whatever fear we have, whatever battle we're trying to fight in our own strength, let's just give it up. We're invited to claim that promise that the burden of the battle is not ours to carry because God fights for us, amen? Sister White puts it this way. Do not be troubled. Jesus loves you and will care for you and bless you. The active, aggressive battle you can no more fight, but you can let Jesus fight it for you. Amen? Amen. And that was the children's um, memory verse this week. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our children are struggling through lots of things, bullying by teachers and staff and children. And, you know, this was such a comfort to them, this lesson this week. But in this time of global crisis and this pandemic, 
It's important that we have a clear understanding of who we are as Seventh-day Adventist Christians. And we need to know our identity and our purpose. And in 1 Peter 2, verse 9, it reminds us, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen? Amen. Let's never forget that, saints, no matter how hard the times may get. So what will the rest of 2021 bring? We're already in September. Can you believe that? Nobody knows what the rest of 2021 will bring. But God knows. We simply have to brace ourselves for the impact. We know that times are going to get harder. We're seeing these empty shelves. You know, I went into um, Tesco yesterday and I was... I've seen it in co-op, which is a smaller branch, but to go into a large Tesco and see all these empty shelves, you know, it's, it's just, yeah, it makes you a bit nervous. <laughs> but we know that times are going to get harder, so we have to prepare for that difficult, that unpleasant thing. It's expected, and we have warnings and signs that God has given us in the Bible. So how do we brace for impact as Christians? Well, on the plane, you'll remember I said we had to sit right back in our seat. We had to put our head in our lap and place our hands over our heads and wait. But as Christians, there will be times that will come in the days and weeks and months and years that are going to get more and more difficult. And the Bible describes it as tribulation as has never been seen since the beginning of the earth until this time nor ever shall be we know the things which are to come we don't know when but we know they're coming a bit like my unexpected experience on the plane journey we knew we had to land and we were waiting expectantly for that impact but in our spiritual journey i would suggest that we have to be grounded in the word amen we have to be in communion with our god in prayer and fasting without ceasing we have to put on the whole armor of god every minute of every day so that we can stand against the darts of the devil we have to ask for the holy spirit in our lives as this is where we will get the strength to stand firm otherwise we will be swept away we have to give up unforgiveness we have to give up malice and pride and strife envy and confess our sins we have to repent and then we have to be still and know that he is god psalm 46 is a comforting psalm and verse 1 says god is my refuge and my help a very present help in trouble and in these times saints we as we face our trials we need to remember that God is present, amen? He's a very present help in trouble. We can survive the crisis in our lives. We can survive the crisis in our marriages. We can survive the crisis in our homes. We can survive the crisis when our children go off the rails. We can walk away from the crisis. The psalmist reminds us that God is our refuge, meaning our hiding place. And we need to hide when we're being chased, don't we? We need to hide when we don't know, we don't want to be found. And we need to hide when someone is after us to destroy us. God is our refuge and our strength. We can't take a breath without him. His strength allows us to be at one with him. His strength gives us our physical strength. And his strength allows us to know when to go and hide and you know satan would love to destroy our homes destroy our marriages our families our children but god is our refuge and our strength he is available we are the ones who have to reach out to him stretch out for him and he will be there for everyone god's presence is covering us he is the one who helps us to brace the impact 
And we see the earth changing every day. The news is always bad news. The physical nature of our world is changing. But saints, we have been promised by God that we will have a place to live, which he is preparing for us. Amen. And it will be better than this chaotic world. There'll be peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Savior above. We have the ability now to brace for impact. We need to be still and know that he is God. We shouldn't worry about what's coming because there's nothing that we can do about it. And there's nothing we can do by worrying. So we can brace by knowing God and allowing God to be in our lives. We can't escape the tribulations, but we can take refuge and he will tuck us away and our worst enemies will not find us. Church, my prayer is that we will not just talk about these things, but that we will do them and we will look up and not be distracted because our redemption is drawing nigh. A time is coming when every knee shall bow, every eye shall see and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. The song says that we have this hope that burns in our heart, hope in the coming of the Lord. Do you have that hope, church? Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's sing that song now and let's prayerfully listen to those words as we sing. Two one six. Two one four. Two one four. Sorry. Okay. No, no, you're right. Savior King Jesus. Amen. Let us look up. We've been promised that the sky will roll back like a scroll and it's an absolute joy to hear our children describe this scene. We'll see Jesus and his holy angels descend. The dead in Christ shall rise first and those who remain will be caught up in the sky with him. There'll be a fanfare of trumpets. It's going to be a loud affair. There'll be joy for all those who were faithfully waiting for him. What a day that will be when our Savior we will see, when we look upon his face, the one who saved us by his grace. What a glorious day that will be. I know that I want to be there. Do you want to be there, church? Amen. 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 Just take a few minutes to speak to God right now. Ask him to help you to be faithful despite all what is going on around you and how hopeless things seem. Ask him to help you 
so that you will not doubt, but that you will still believe. Ask him to help you so that you will brace for impact whilst we still can. Let's take a few minutes. Lord, even now, prepare us for that better place that you are preparing for us. Help us, Lord, so that we will not doubt despite what we see going on around us. Help us to have faith in you. Help us, Lord, to brace for impact whilst we still can. Knowing you, Lord, and allowing you to be God in our lives, even if that means giving up the things we love. Lord, we want to be where you are. We are tired of this chaotic life down here. Creating us clean hearts, Lord, and renew right spirits, I pray. Remove everything from us which is unlike you and fill us with your Holy Spirit. We come before you now earnestly like King Jehoshaphat. We are claiming past promises where you have saved your people and led them to safety. We don't know what to do, Lord, but our eyes are upon you. We thank you for your promises, Lord, that we should not be afraid because the battle is not ours, but it's yours. And you have promised as well that you will fight our battles for us. You are the same God who brought the dead back to life. You are the same God who cast out demons. You are the same God who caused the blind to see, who caused the lame to walk, who calmed the stormy seas and the wind and obeyed your voice. I know there is nothing impossible for you, Lord. All things are possible with you. Act, Lord. Hear our humble cry. And whilst on others thou art calling, Lord, please do not pass us by. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen.